Hey guys, Mike here with EverythingAboutConcrete.com. Now I wanted to bring you right on the job with me today. So we're pouring a 32 by 24 foot garage floor. Inside the garage, the garage has been built as you can see. So the foundation was put in earlier, earlier in the spring and uh, they, just, they just had to build the garage before we put the floor in. So the specs on the floor were a four inch thick concrete floor, 3500 PSI with microfiber and 6 mil poly vapor barrier. So that's why we're pouring it the way we are here. A lot of people up here where I'm from just use fiber mesh in the concrete. They don't use much wire mesh and a lot of them don't even use rebar. So we use a lot of the fibers in our pores as you can tell from some of my other videos on the channel. Speaking of my channel, if you're new here, we pour all kinds of concrete. So if you love concrete, go ahead down there and hit subscribe. If you like these kind of videos, please smash that like button, guys. Now what we'd like to do is we like to get a lot of the floor poured right out because it doesn't really take us that long to screed it or bull float it. So we get a lot of it poured right out. And if you're, you know, thinking of doing a garage floor like this on your own, you might not want to pour out quite as much as we do at once. And you don't need to really. You could just pour out. Uh, you could come down 10 or 12 feet from that back wall, get that screeded, and then you know just keep moving on. But this is typically the way we do it. I also always use a what I call a water reducer in my mix, and the water reducer comes right from the concrete batch plant. It's just a chemical additive you ask them to add when they batch the concrete. And what that water reducer does is it, is it makes the concrete more flowable, a lot looser than it would be normally without it. And that's why we use it. We use it every day. So we can pour a pretty nice loose mix like you can see right here using that water reducer. And it doesn't weaken the concrete at all. So it just makes pouring a lot easier. If you want to find out more about that, you know, just check with your concrete batch man and just see what they carry. Most of them carry that additive, but they don't add it unless you ask for them. And it's usually a few bucks extra per yard. But you can see how really nice that makes the concrete flow. Just makes the whole pour go that much easier. Now I'm mag floating my edges. We got a chalk line snapped around there. This floor also slopes from the back to the front about two and a half inches, so it's got pretty good slope to it. We do a lot of floors, garage floors like that. We don't do floors to, with uh, center floor drains much anymore. Most people just slope them right out the front, and then any water that drips off the car will just kind of work its way out the door. And we never really have trouble with the door freezing shut in the winter. It just doesn't seem to happen. You can see I'm taking my time getting my edges mag. Now I'm shooting my wet pad in the middle. I got the laser set up to whatever slope that is right there. That's probably about three quarters of an inch lower than the back. And we're going to use that wet pad to screed off from. I'm just checking it with my laser. I use a, a Topcon RL H5B laser. That's down in the link for that's down in the description too if you want to check that out. That's the one I recommend for doing concrete work. It works really, really good. That X means it's right where we want it. Now I'm going to end up putting another wet pad right there. So that one's going to be a little bit lower than the one I just shot. Maybe another half inch or so lower as the floor slopes out the doors. And Darren and Luke, now they're back there striking their wet pad in the middle so they can use that to screed the rest of the floor from. And that's how we screed our concrete. We'll either do it by hand like this, which is what we do mostly when we have one that has a lot of slope to it, or we'll use we'll use a power screed, a vibrating screed, whatever you guys want to call it. You've seen you've seen me use those in some of my other videos. We uh, we do that on a lot of the flat floors. But that's how we kick screed right there. Is as we move backwards, we just kick in our footprint, and it helps keep the concrete filled in the, that area so we don't leave a little hole there as we screed. But two guys on a 14 foot rod like that can screed quite a bit of concrete pretty fast. If we were to time just the actual screeding time on this floor, it was probably maybe five minutes, the actual screeding time. Just doesn't take very long when you got two guys that know what they're doing. Plus, plus the 
the guy raking the concrete there, he's got to be good too. So I'm okay at it. I've only been doing it a few years, so I, I'm, I'm okay at it. I'm kidding. I've been doing it for 40 years. So <laughs> a lot of you guys know that, but some of you don't if this is your first video. I've been doing concrete work for 40 years. Been doing it since I was 15 years old. So a long, long time. Let me know down in the comments, you guys pouring concrete, how long have you been doing concrete? You know, give me a number down there in the comments. How many years have you been in the concrete business? You can see how Luke screeds right off that existing pad. He's watching the end, making sure he's not digging in, floating that right across the surface, making sure we score, but we don't dig in or ride high. So we know the, the floor ends up being really nice nice and flat if that's what we're shooting for or if we have a slope to it like this one then we know it's got just the right slope to it the guys are waiting for me now to bull float you know I've only got so many handles on this thing I can only reach so far so <laughs> they're waiting just waiting for me as usual but when you pour a slump like this bull floating is really easy just down and back and it really smooths the surface off really nice Now Luke and Darren are just going to screed by themselves. They don't even need me. That's how good they are. <laughs> they can get that whole thing screeded without even me puddling for them. You can see how much in rhythm they are. Once you learn that motion, screeding becomes really, really easy. All you got to do is focus on your edge. Make sure you're not digging in. That's what it's like. We pour a lot of garage floors in a year. I don't know. We might do a hundred of these. How many? How many of you guys? You guys pouring floors? How many garages do you do in a year? Is it? Is it ten? Is it fifty? Is it a hundred? Let me know. Now I got the concrete a little bit low here, so I'm really pushing it up. I want to make sure them guys don't have to stop just because of me. So I'm pushing it up as fast as I can until they run out of they run out of pad to screed off from. And then uh, I'll get a little bit more in here for him. I just don't want to get too much. I don't want a big pile of concrete outside the door in the driveway. So we try not to get too much in here. If you guys want to learn how to do concrete like we do, pour and finish, stamping, uh, epoxy floors, repairing concrete, my private membership, the Concrete Underground, is there's a link for it down in the description below. You can check that out. And it's where I train you to do concrete just like we do. You might even learn how to screed like that in there. <laughs> it just takes a lot of practice is what it does. They're going to come right down to the end and they'll stop and step out, fill in their boot tracks and then they'll finish screeding that little piece right there. So all in all it probably took us you know, without hurrying or timing ourselves or anything, but maybe about maybe about 30 minutes to pour something inside like this. It doesn't really take very long once you know what you're doing. I think it was about nine yards of concrete. So we get the concrete dumped, get it screeded, both loaded, get the truck back to the batch plant so they can load it and send it to somebody else. And we never really have to wait for trucks that way. You know, if if you take good care of the, the batch man, he's going to take good care of you in most cases. That's what we like to do. We like to dump them right out and get them right back. Pretty sunny day out today. This thing's going to dry pretty good for us even though it's inside. The water temperature in the concrete still kind of warm. It's still springtime up here and still gets chilly in the morning. So they leave, they leave the warm water on. There's probably 100 degree water in there. By the time it gets mixed with the concrete, the concrete comes out at about 70 degrees. So it, it does still set up pretty good for us. You can see I'm using that tilt head on the bull float. I get that from Superior Innovations. They make some really good equipment and it makes that tilt head makes bull floating so much easier. So that's how we pour a 30 by 24 by 4 inch concrete floor. If, if you want to learn more, again, check out the Concrete Underground. 
If not, subscribe, and we'll just see you on the next one, guys. Thanks for listening.